You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We get to travel around the world today. Mm -hmm. We're headed to Asia. So excited. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us in studio, the Reverend Charles Ferry. He's Asia Regional Director for the LCMS Office of International Mission. Pastor Ferry, welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be. Also joining us in studio, Sam Borgwart. He's the Asia Regional Business Manager for the LCMS Office of International Mission. Sam, welcome back. Thank you, Andy. It's great to be here. We are really interested in getting an update on what's happening in the Asia region for LCMS International Mission. And let's talk about, first of all, let's define the Asia region because we also have Eurasia too as well. So that covers part of Asia as well. So what makes up the Asia region for LCMS Office of International Mission purposes? The Asia region, just to set the context here, is the oldest mission field for the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. The first missionaries that were sent out years ago went to the country of India, and so that's where the LCMS has been working in international mission work longer than anywhere else. We're actually very, very thankful to the Lord and his mercies to his church over the years because not only do we look back on those years when Theodore Nather and Frank Cohn went to India, but then also the fact that the Lord has preserved for himself the preaching of his word and the administration of his sacraments in that place. And so the India Evangelical Lutheran Church, which was planted by those first LCMS missionaries, still is our partner today. And actually this fall, we're looking forward to having a delegation from the LCMS there in Nagarkoil, way down at the southern tip of India to celebrate a hundred years that that seminary has been in operation preparing pastors for the church. So the oldest mission field is Asia, and it comes from India and Sri Lanka over on one side of the region, all the way over through Australia, New Zealand on the other side, and then up to Korea and Japan, and everything in, encompassed in that particular set of boundaries. So it actually includes three out of the four most populous countries in the world. India, of course, being number one now, China being number two. Third is the United States, so they don't count in my region, but we do have the fourth country, and that's Indonesia with about 250 million people as well. So we're looking at a huge portion of the Earth's population that's mm -hmm. included in the Asia region of the LCMS that has in some years past been split into two regions, has been reunited then for about the last seven or eight years. So that's, that's our Asia region of your Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. That covers a lot of countries, a lot of different cultures, and a lot of different languages. A lot like of vastly countries. Vastly different. Absolutely. And so my family and I learned Indonesian when we first came out of the parish and went into Indonesia then as missionaries there for the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod about 11 years ago. And then we moved to Taiwan about six years ago and have been working really hard at learning Chinese then because mm -hmm. that's the language that's spoken all around us there, which is is a complicating factor when you talk about translating Lutheran materials mm. into what language, right? <laughs> right? There's no single language that's going to reach all of the people of the Asia region. And so translation projects are, of course, one big ongoing project that we have. And we're always concentrating on getting more Lutheran materials out so that people can read them in their own languages. Right now, we've got uh, just under 20 missionary units all together. Uh, we have one husband and wife couple. That's, of course, the Seamas in Cambodia. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's uh, singles with their families that are accompanying them, supporting them. So 20 altogether. We just celebrated the completion of the service of David and Barbara Bush, who returned to their home, their ancestral home, really, in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. <laughs> so we miss them tremendously, but we thank God for the work that they did and the work that God has done through them during their years on the field. So we're down to 19 at this point. Not nearly enough people to do all of the work that our partners are asking us to do. And that's probably one other thing that shouldn't be lost in this conversation is that the Asia region today of the LCMS stands on the shoulders of those missionaries whom the Lord has sent through his church in years past. And their work 
had its effect. It is still bearing fruit today. We've got partner churches that were planted by previous missionaries and who are our mature partners today. So responding to their needs and meeting them where they are and having them look to us now, not as as those who are planting them and directing them, but those who are coming alongside of them to walk along this journey until our Lord comes back again. Yeah, that's a wonderful maturing of the mission field with all of those churches that, like you said, have been planted in years past, and now you guys are able to serve them in a different way, but still partnering together to share the gospel in a huge region in Asia. That That is really wonderful. And we've been able to share so many stories that you guys have been working on in the Asia region in the years past. What are some of the projects that are happening right now? Yeah, right now we've got a really exciting program in Taiwan, Sarah, a seminary initiative. Our partner church in Taiwan, the China Evangelical Lutheran Church, and and that's China in in Chinese, it's Zhonghua. It's it's a cultural China. It's not the country of China. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to form their own seminary initiative and program, form pastors. And as we know, pastors need mentors to be formed. So they're requesting that all of their pastors go through an eight-course colloquy program right now. It's taught by professors from <clears throat> Fort Wayne, and so it's received great feedback from the pastors in, in Taiwan. They just, <laughs> they love this Lutheran theology. They love opening the scriptures. They love opening the catechism. They love opening the Book of Concord and just studying that and saying, oh my goodness, I believe this. How can we let more people in Taiwan know about this? So it's just been an overwhelming, great partnership with Fort Wayne as we continue to develop that program and develop pastors for the partner church there. We also have a really exciting initiative in Taiwan right now at the request of the partner church there, a music conservatory that at the heart of this conservatory, it's a church plant. That's what we're about. We're spreading the gospel, planting Lutheran churches, showing mercy, all connected to the church where word and sacrament ministry occurs. So at the request of the partner church, we have this music conservatory because the partner church in their studies they've found hey there's a big connection here between our theology and music they go hand in hand how can we equip our pastors our church workers our laity to know their theology and the connection it has to music so we have been very blessed with partnerships with LCMS RSO David's Harp out of I believe Nebraska the Schwann Foundation has been incredibly generous to help equip this space And we're looking to, God willing, in the next couple of days, actually groundbreak on this space in Jiayi, Taiwan. Mm -hmm. That at the heart of it, it is a church plant, but it's going to be used to train the partner church in the history, the practice, the theology of music. And then it's also going to be an outreach opportunity to connect people that are unchurched or maybe de-churched in Taiwan or don't have any church, connect them to the church through music. So that's very exciting. Another thing that's coming up in Taiwan that's I'm really excited about <laughs> is we have, for the first time this year, under Missionary Mindy Taves, an English VBS program that our partner church has requested her to assist in implementing, designing, carrying out, to catechize the children of the CELC and the partner church. Again, through their studies, through the Word of God, they've come to realize we need to be teaching our children this. We need to be purposefully, intensely teaching them so that they can be raised and stay in the faith. And so Mindy is working very hard with our partner church to recruit volunteers from the States, get them over to Taiwan, and just run a VBS. Just your your average LCMS VBS that you see in the summer, we're doing that in a Taiwan context, very intentionally connecting that to the church and ensuring that there's follow-up there for maybe guests and and kids that are coming for the first time. How can we plug them into the church and get them back week after week where they can receive the gifts that God promises in the church? So really three big initiatives right now in Taiwan that our partner church has requested us to help out with and that are all connected to word and sacrament ministry there. Those are some outstanding projects, and it's great to see the growth of that relationship with the Partner Church and see how the Lord is working in that. I believe last time we talked, you were just getting ready to move to Taiwan. Yes. Mm-hmm. So tell us about making the move. How long ago has was that? Well, that was a, uh, about a year ago now. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> so you've, you've been in Taiwan nearly a year. I have. 
Tell yeah. us about making the, that adjustment to life in Taiwan and now serving as the, regi- uh, the regional business manager. Yeah, good question. I would say it's – so I had previously lived in Taiwan for about four and a half years. I, I completed a master's program from a university in Taiwan there prior to joining the LCMS as, a, as an employee. So I was familiar with Taiwan, but I had never lived in Jiayi, which is where our regional headquarters is. And I absolutely love Jai. It is the best place to live in Taiwan. It's people are very hospitable. It's kind of a it's a smaller city, relatively speaking, for Asian <laughs> for Asian standards. <laughs> relatively speaking, a smaller city, only about you know like three hundred four hundred thousand people. So oh yeah, smaller, it's, it's small. not like St. Louis. Uh, yeah, 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 it's small. So it's a kind of a slower, more more down to earth pace in life and that really allows you i think the the connection to make those relationships with the locals because really it's i you know you see that in the US too it's through those relationships that you can introduce people to the church it's hey you know what are you doing this weekend you want to come to church with me those kinds of interactions we're living in Jai gives you that opportunity because you're not under the impression that you always have to be moving and doing something. Mm. So that's really something that I appreciate living there. Maybe I need to move there. I know. Sounds, a little sounds slower. great to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was one of the considerations that we had in, in founding this seminary program, the seminary initiative with our partners in Taiwan. Where would we locate something like this, right? As it, as it is, the LCMS donors years ago had bought this land and the partner church had built this building that wasn't being used. And so it's a five-story building where our missionaries can live. We have office space. We have a chapel. We have a theological library. We've got classroom space. But being located in in this smaller town with its slower pace is a great place to have a house of theological studies where you can get away from the rat race that would be life up in some of the bigger cities like Taipei or, or down in Kaohsiung and can just get away and contemplate and spend time in the word and the mm-hmm. confessions and in fellowship with one another. So we really have been blessed by the way that the Lord has brought this all together, not for our benefit, but for the benefit of his word and its, its faithful proclamation in Taiwan. We're getting an update on the Lord's work in the Asia region of the LCMS Office of International Mission. We'll continue the conversation in just a moment. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We're talking with our friends serving in the Asia region for the LCMS, the Reverend Charles Ferry. He's the Asia Regional Director. And Sam Borgwart, he's the Asia Regional Business Manager. Learning about the Lord's work there, the partnerships with the partner churches and the number of projects and what life is like been, has been for uh, mm-hmm. Sam spending a, uh, his first year serving in this role as well, but not new to Asia, not new, not new to Taiwan as well. What would you say would be some of the differences um, from where you were before? and where you are now. You mentioned it's a slightly slower pace. Do you feel like your life, your four years prior in Taiwan really prepared you for what you're doing now? Oh, that's a great question, Andy. Yes, I would say. And even I think we all can say this, whatever vocation we're serving in, you can look back on your life and you're maybe going through some things where you're like, why God, you know, (laughs) why is this happening? But then you get to a point in your life where you see the Lord was preparing you for something. You were going through something for a purpose. And I think I can see that formation in how I'm serving in Taiwan. I was prepared coming into this role, knowing Mandarin Chinese, having somewhat of a background in business. So you can really see, and I think this is applicable to every Christian, you know, you can look back and see how the Lord has prepared you, led you to the vocation that you're serving in right now. 
What does that life look like? You mentioned at the headquarters in Jai. What does that life look like for the regional staff that's housed uh, together in that office space? In some ways, it doesn't look any different from what you might expect. It's a mm-hmm. collection of people that have been gathered for a common purpose that all have their own apartments. Mm -hmm. We've got a a number of the team that happen to be single folks like Sam. And so they've got a a smaller flat up on on one floor. And then some of us who have families, we have some of the larger flats than on the the lower floors. But people going to work, going to their offices that just happen to be a very short commute, (laughs) a 10 second walk, you know, up the stairs and down the hall, which is incredibly convenient. That I can sneak home during the day to check on my wife and how the kids are treating her and make sure everybody's <laughs> still alive. Uh, but then uh, also to be able to have the freedom to, to come and go as we need to. We are blessed in that community to have a number of different aspects that link us together as our life in Christ as well. For instance, um, when we have a, a pastor there to lead the services, we're gathering three times a week in our chapel to be able to hear the word together, to pray and sing together, to be built up in that community as the Lord works through his His means of grace. We're able to, to host English divine services because we all are part of the local church that's following the liturgy and the hymnody, but all in Chinese. Mm-hmm. And so that's not my heart language. And so to be able to have opportunities for us who are native English speakers then to partake and to hear the, hear the word uh, proclaimed in English as well is, is important for us and for our families uh, also. So we get really the best of both worlds. We get to be part of the local community in the local language, but then we also get to be fed in our, in our heart language and have that commonality as well. It's been wonderful for my family, especially as some of us travel so frequently, to know that they have support from their colleagues and coworkers there in the building. It's a wonderful joy to be able to support one another. Hey, have you found a good place to buy some some milk, right? Have, where can I find this? How can I get that? How can I take the bus mm-hmm. to, to just support one another, especially as people kind of get up and running in that context. So we are blessed in a number of different ways to be able to have everybody together in that community and then to be knowing that we're in the hands of the partner church and all because because of the generosity of LCMS donors years ago to be able to provide that property and and lay that foundation. That was some great foresight to, to <laughs> yeah. do that. Sam, what does it mean for you to have that, that community? You, you're certainly immersed in the culture there in Taiwan, but to also have this, this connection with your fellow missionaries, your fellow team. Yeah. You know, no one's really an island. And I think even more so in a foreign mission field context, it's it's incredibly beneficial to have that support network of other Christians, other Lutherans in the building where I can just go down the hall to his office and say, hey, let's talk this out or what is this? You know, it's that whole iron sharpens iron concept, but it also allows you to have that, you know, safe space to come back to and to really become better equipped to then go back out into Jai, go back out into Taiwan, and to be purposefully having those conversations with people that aren't Christians yet, so that they can be brought into the church. So having that community there is just so powerful, helpful, and then it's it's a safe space where you can be recharged through the mutual studying of God's Word, worshiping together, and just words of encouragement. I'm talking about having partnerships with the people that are immediately around you and, and partner churches. Who are some of the other partners that you work with to do the work, talking about the conservatory and the seminary? Who are some of the other partners that you get to work with to carry out these projects in the Asia region? Really, the most important one for us in Taiwan in particular is our partner church, the China Evangelical Lutheran Church. They are a daughter church of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. So it was our previous generation of missionaries preaching the word, administering the sacraments that that really brought this about and, and that was the tool that the Lord used. They are an incredible partner and they have come through all sorts of dark years. And this really kind of started emerging about 10 years ago. They've it turned some incredible corners and their leadership right now, Andrew Miao and Joseph Liu are determined 
to have the church be the church. They don't want to be about reclaiming properties and legal battles and all these kinds of things that they struggled with for years. They want it to be about the proclamation of the word into people's ears, the planting of churches, and then the showing of mercy to our neighbors. So they none of this would be possible without their vision and leadership and their determination to have this church be faithful to what we know it's it's supposed to be. And then we're we're very thankful to have other groups like the RSO that Sam mentioned a little bit ago, this David's Harp organization that's based in Council Bluffs. And and this organization has been so generous with mm. their time, with their expertise, with the materials that they're producing. They just want to be helpful and supportive. Um, they want to play a part in the establishment of this music conservatory because they understand what we're trying to accomplish and they understand the power of music to carry the word of God into people's ears that might not normally have a chance to hear it at all. So we really are thankful for our friends at, at David's Harp and for the for the vision that the Schwann Foundation had as well to be able to see what it is to grasp that and, and come alongside of us as we're trying to accomplish these goals of this church plant and the music conservatory and for them to share their generosity then and 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 be able to share their resources with us i think many of us heard not too long ago about recent earthquakes that took place in taiwan how did that impact you the the community and those you serve yeah so about a month ago now taiwan had its largest earthquake and i think it was over 20 years it struck on the eastern side of the island so the side of the island that's facing toward japan Thankfully, loss of life was minimal. Damage was minimal. This was due mostly in part that it's a more remote area of the island. It's not as heavily populated or a concentration of population like the larger cities. So damage was, thanks be to God, minimal. And importantly, too, our partner church, their members, their buildings, their assets were not damaged with that as well. But it's been about a month and there have been aftershocks and there have been subsequent earthquakes. But Taiwan, you know, it's in the ring of fire. So they're mm-hmm. they're kind of used to earthquakes. But, you know, in every in every tragedy, there's always an opportunity to show mercy and to connect people to the church. Um, and so that is what our prayer is for, for these earthquakes in Taiwan, that the Lord would use it to draw people to himself through acts of mercy from the church. Yeah, absolutely. So we mentioned seminary conservatory. What else are you guys looking forward to? You're here right now on on, on leave. What are, what's next? What are you looking forward to once you guys get back on the ground in Taiwan? That's a good question. <laughs> good food. Oh, um, hey, yeah. Yeah. That's something to look forward to. Uh, we actually, in Taiwan, have a, a group from the LCMS coming over to do kind of a, a audit, maybe that's not the right word, to do a inspection of the various properties that the CELC oh. has. As Pastor Ferry spoke to earlier, LCMS donors were very generous in years past, and the CELC has quite a bit of property that they are intent on undeveloping for gospel proclamation and word and sacrament ministry. So we'll have a team from the LCMS come out to view these properties, maybe give some advice on, hey, how can we use this for the work of the church? So that's something exciting that that's wow. coming up and that, that we're working toward accomplishing, again, all for the benefit of, of word and sacrament ministry. It, it really is ironic that Sam's the one that's talking about this too, because this is a, <laughs> a great reminder of the body of Christ and how it all works together and how people, you know, it's it's not just pastors that go out and serve as missionaries, but the critical need, the critical utility of having lay people and commissioned ministers with particular God-given gifts and vocations who are used by God in his church to accomplish this work, right? There's no way that we could do all of the proclamation, the teaching, the resource development that we're doing in Asia if it weren't for people like Sam with these wonderful gifts and vocations that have been given by God to, uh, to his to His church to be used in these various ways. And so this delegation that's going to be coming out is going to be showing that as well with people with different areas of expertise that are helping us be good stewards of what's been given and help us all keep it focused on those overarching pillars of planting Lutheran churches, proclaiming the gospel, and and showing mercy. Hmm. How can we stay informed on the Lord's work in Asia region? 
Well, we certainly invite people to visit the international website, which is international.lcms.org slash Asia, where we are looking at, at posting updates and, and having things there. There's also, we're working together with our Missionary Services Unit here in St. Louis to make sure that there are updates that are posted on social media at, at regular times. And we always invite people to contact us directly. We have easy to find email addresses if they have questions. We're more than happy to help the church understand the wonders that they are accomplishing through this partnership that we have together. Thanks be to God. Our guest today, the Reverend Charles Ferry, Asia Regional Director for the LCMS Office of International Mission. Pastor Ferry, thanks for joining us. Always fun. Thank you. And Sam Borgward, Asia Regional Business Manager for the LCMS Office of International Mission. Sam, great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.